So what's good, how you doing? Good evening. My name is Alexander Barry Camp, also known as Master Nitro Camp, and I'm a men's development coach. I deal with empowering black men to become power brothers. And a power brother is a black man that recognizes his divine nature and act to make his existence a success unto himself and his race. Good evening, welcome. Now, if you were to tune into a lot of my videos, I always talk about business, health, and relationships. Now, this evening, this is a special occasion. It's the evening time. I'm going to give you guys the book on women. Hmm. Now, what's the reason why I'm going to give you the book on women? The first thing is, you know, when I talk about business and, and, and productivity hacks or things you can implement to improve your life, there's a low viewership meaning that most guys find it boring. Most people in general find it boring and they gravitate more to the more illustrious um, hype, um, what we would call the exciting topics, sex, um, things are funny, comedic, et cetera. That's why most, because most people are what they call looking for escapism. They don't want to face the truth. They find it hard to look at the things that require more of their mental capacity. So they choose to do the easy thing. And that's what leads, leads to uh, instant gratification, which leads to a miserable life. Now, me as a young man on my journey, believe it or not, my first part of my journey was spiritual in the sense that I wanted to learn how to become powerful. Like literally, you know, when you grow up watching things like Dragon Ball Z and, you know, and the superheroes, you wanted to gain some sense of power. That's what you're interested in. Boom, bam, bam, playing with toys and, you know, boom, I shoot you with a Kamehameha, you know? And that's like more like when you were a teenager or preteens, but, you know, you were just interested in video games and, and playing and riding bicycles and seeing you could pop or climb trees. But then it comes a stage after you become 13 and then you introduce the sex. Some people introduce the sex via porn, um, DVDs, et cetera, and then, that world opens up and then you start to go down a tunnel vision and then you start to explore the world of women. Now, when it comes as a man, right? Most guys in this day and time, their focus is on the woman, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that to a certain extent, but you have to understand in your preliminary developmental process as a man, if your focus is women, you're gonna be destroyed because like a tree that is barely strong and has deep enough roots, to be big and strong enough to support themselves and then support fruit. But you, instead of that, you're giving your resources out. Anyway, so with that being said, I just want you to know the premise. So I'm going to give you the book on women, okay? Now, in the Bible times, you know, we Solomon is said to have over 700 women or something like concubines and et cetera. And even certain parts, you say the ways of a woman along finding out or something to that extent. You know, some translations may differ. But the whole thing about women is that Today's women, today's generation of women are different than the women back in the day. You know, we said that our grandmother's time was different because they were more in touch with earth, with, with earth. And they were more in touch with their, their female duty. Um, they took care of households. They could clean and cook very well. The late the women of this day and time could barely cook. They prefer you to bring them uh, McDonald's and Wendy's and KFC. And they're not as in tune. They are not as skilled. But they feel like they, once they bring coochie to the table, <laughs> and you know coochie is, right? Vagina, right? Then everything is all pure all fine. But as a man, if you don't know, understand the book on women today, you're going to be lost. Now, honestly, women have not really changed physically since the beginning of time. The only thing that changed is the culture in which society creates the atmosphere for certain activities and habits and behaviors to be more acceptable. So for instance, back in the day, before the feminism movement, we had more women who were more conservative, more people who were married back in the 70s and 80s. I think 80% of black people were married compared to now. And it was more of a family structure, you know? Now, I say all that to give you the book on women because you have to understand where something came from and not understand what we're currently in. Right now, we're in the pool of techno technological advancement, meaning that technology is taking over everything, every sphere of influence, including the dating arena. Now, when you think about women, women can fall in two categories, dating and relationships. 
So basically dating just means that you're meeting somebody and most of the times is for sexual reasons. And then relationships is more like for duty reasons, meaning that you want to build something meaningful, maybe start a family. <sighs> now, the book on women revolves around you, yourself. Okay, there are two things. I remember back in the day, I was obsessed with understanding how to get women. Now, interesting thing is that from primary school, I always had the top level women always fighting for my attention. From I was in primary school, I always had the prettiest girls who all the guys want wanting to like me, sending me notes, do you like me? Yes or no. And literally, it was so easy because one thing I used to always do, just look at them. Like, I just had this probably powerful gaze. I just look at a woman. I wouldn't even have to say a word. I just look at her. And she'd be like, why are you looking at me? I'm like, ah, why are you looking at me like me? I'm just like, and every time I look at a woman, I just had this power, you know? And I understand it was the power of pure intent with little to no words. That's the most powerful thing a man could do you know when you father when you're growing up and you've had a father in your home and you did something wrong all your father would do is look at you and be like and be like what is that's how powerful you as a man with the masculine power is but you don't understand the power you have because you've given it away you're, you're too interested in sexual pleasure and you watch too much porn or you know you you're just in the wrong headspace because we live in a society that hyper inflates sexual sexuality and beyond the point, you know, if you look at animals, even animals in animals kingdom don't be crazy about sex unless it's mating season, then they do their thing. And then, okay, back to normal conduct. As human beings, like as a young man, especially with a cell phone in your hand, you're faced with everything you go, you go to Instagram, see women in bikinis and shaking a button, doing all kind of weird stuff, you know? <laughs> so that's, you're in this culture atmosphere that, that makes you weak, okay? It's designed that way because strong men, in a society, this is, you can't control people when you have a strong man in the home. But if you eliminate the backbone, which is the men, then you can control society. Now, I know I'm telling you the book, playbook of women, but this is very important. I must give you premise, okay? Now, the playbook on women. The first thing when it comes to a woman is that you have to understand that it's not about what you do. It's about who you are. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. Okay, let me give you an example. Many of you guys can relate that once upon a time, there was a girl that you gave a lot of attention and did a lot of favors for. And at the end of the day, that girl went with a guy who did not give as much attention and didn't even do any favors for her. But he ended up getting to the prize. And we will talk about the prize, in this case, sexual activity. Now, with that being said, if you were to take yourself, let's say you have a girlfriend, right? And... Chris Brown walks into the room. Chris Brown. Indeed, I can run it, run it. The man on the floor. If he ain't, let me know. Indeed, I can run it, run it. Right? So when we think about that, right, she would automatically be more interested in the Chris Brown figure simply because who he is. So right now, Chris Brown represents what they call status. Men in society get more privilege based upon the work they've done, but not just because of that, but because of the person they have become. So Chris Brown in a woman's mind is higher value. That's why she would take the opportunity to get rid of your relationship with her for a one night stand with Chris Brown and justify it with her in her mind. And it's all because women look for men who are, how can we put it, complete or how can we put it? who are resourceful because the amount of attention he's garnered, it gives the woman more of a safety net to be in a fantasy world. <clears throat> so I just want to put that there. Okay. So the playbook on woman, the first thing start with you, if you want to get really good with women, it's very easy. And I could put it like this, honestly, that should be the least of your worries as a man. What you need to focus on is developing who you are by doing the work that is required to put you in the position where you're wanted by everybody. I mean that you're so good at what you do until anytime someone thinks about a problem, they think of you as the solution. And that works on so many levels in business, health, and relationships. So when it comes to women, right? If you look around, it's not difficult to get a girlfriend. It's very simple. 
Now, many guys who spend the time developing themselves in the business and financial world, they think it's difficult, but they don't understand the dynamics when it comes to women and how to navigate it. You have to understand that there's a system for everything. Dating has a system. Relationships has a system. But most guys don't have a system. So we said all that. Let's give you the playbook now. No more delays. I just want you to get that because that's very important. So the playbook on women. The first thing as a man in order to be, to be desirable by women is that you must become a fisherman. But you must not only become a fisherman, a regular fisherman, you must become an advanced fisherman. So for instance, a fisherman is someone who could cast their line into the water with the right bait that the fish likes and literally get the fish to bite and you to hook up the fish and do whatever he wants with the fish, eat the fish. Now, as a man, you need a line, okay? A line to cast out, you need bait, okay? A line and a bait. So the line and the bait, the line represents your field of influence in the world, meaning that the systems you put in place for you to generate money. All right. So now let's just back up. So imagine this. The first thing is, as a fisherman of women, you need a boat. The boat is the sitting place where you could have a strong foundation and be comfortable. That represents your place, meaning that you must have an environment that is conducive to invite women in. That means before you go to the point of inviting women into your life, you need to have your own apart apartment or own house. The reason being because it gives you a place for nesting. Women are nesters. They love to nest. Just like a bird, a female bird, she needs a nest to have children, right? So that the children can be safe. So women are nesters. So you need to have an environment. So if you're, in a, you're a man and you don't have your own, own apartment and it doesn't look good, you don't have a television, a nice bed, a nice bathroom set up, you know, a nice kitchen. Don't pursue women because you're not yet at the level to maintain it. Because it's one thing to get it and there's one thing to maintain it. So the boat represents your nesting. Next is the line represents your ability to communicate with women. So you have to be able to be able to communicate in a raw fashion. Unfiltered conversation about what you really feel in that moment. And you have to communicate that directly, exactly how it is in your mind based upon what you're feeling. Do you feel really attracted to a woman? You tell her that. But before you do that, you must introduce yourself because the words that you say will have less effect unless you know who you are. So you must say, hello, hi, hey, how you doing? Hey, can I talk to you for a minute? Get permission. She said, yes, okay. Hey, I'm Alex, X, Y, and Z. I just saw you. And listen, you caught my attention. Look very beautiful, man. I, I just got excited. Like chemistry started happening and then there was a little party happening in my pants, you know? Like literally, you have to be real like that. And it's kind of comedic. Boom. Now, the words that you say are less important, that, but you have to connect, okay? Now, women are creatures of comfort, so you have to make them comfortable. And how you do to use your words. If you want to be able to put a woman in a frame of mind of being receptive to what you have to say, you have to use words like, hey, beautiful. Hey, lovely. Hey, honey. Things like that. Ready, set the dy dynamics, even if a woman you're just meeting. Hey, hun, let me tell you why. Have you ever met a woman who you just doing work for or something? She just say, yeah, no problem, baby. How does that make you feel? I feel like you have, you're supposed to like, you have special privilege with her, right? And you like, you would, you would do, you don't want to do anything to ruin that. Yes, baby. Yeah, honey. Some girls not. She says, yeah, honey. It is a way in order to get into a woman's mind because it helps you to connect. Like for instance, before you can send a photo from one phone to the next, you have to pair the two phones. Pairing means that you must be able to give a signal so that someone could receive it. A woman is a receiver. So when you're able to say words like, hey, baby, hey, honey, now, baby, you got to be a little, have a little description with that because someone be like, don't call me baby, but you say, hey, honey, hey, beautiful, beautiful, hey, beautiful works, right? Now, we talk about the boat being your place. You have to be comfortable. Your boat is something you can get you around. You should have a vehicle to move around. The boat represents your house, your apartment, or your, and it represents your car, ability to move around. You could navigate the sea. That's why they always keep saying there's more fish in the sea. You understand? So I'm giving you a multi-dimensional perspective on this aspect. So when it comes to your line, at the end of the line must be bait. Now, what is the bait? Okay. Now, the bait is this. The bait is the ability 
to present yourself with something that women like. Okay, so the bait is something that draws women to you. So the bait can be a combination of a few things. Number one, it could be the way you dress. If you dress the best and smell the best, we have this three level. We say L, okay, S, F, L, G, S, G, F, G. Look good, smell good, feel good. Now, first thing when people people look at you, they're going to put a value on your head. It's called a social market value. When a woman sees you, she's ready to summon up in your head where you stand in that realm. Every do it with everybody. And based upon that, she's going to decide how she's going to treat you. Is she going to give you access to the goods early or you're going to get delayed access? But none of it matters. But none of it matters in the sense that you still could escalate down if you have a system because there are bums who get women as well. But you want to look good, smell good, feel good. So you want to always dress as something that makes you more higher value. SMV increases your SMV, so social market value. Next is you want to smell good because everybody is creatures of smell. So that means a nice cologne, proper hygiene, meaning taking baths in the morning or before bed. And then also to breath freshness, chew on ginger, brush your teeth, etc. Basics. When you look good, smell good, and you feel good, meaning you have proper nutrition, get good night's sleep, you give off a certain aura that attracts people to you in general. Even in business, they're like, hey, just by you showing up looking good, they would be like, hey, this guy deserves my money. Just in business, just telling you. All right, so after you have that down pack, that's what attracts women. Next is your car can attract women. Some guys, like, especially red cars, red cars drive women. It sends a signal to women, almost like it lets the guard down. And they feel like they should ride in a red Honda with rims, you know, but that's the basic. So that's to call your inner game, meaning that you deal with the aspect of yourself. Also, too, in order to look good, you have to make sure your physique is good, meaning that you don't have to be big, muscular, buff, beef guy, but just have a balanced warrior physique that looks good. Like you take off your shirt at the beach, all the girls look at you. That's what I get. Girls look at me and they can't stop staring at me. I'm not a big guy, but I have a nice aesthetic physique. And that requires you to put in the work. See, men, as a man, you have to put in a lot of work. Women and gain their value from birth. Men have to work for their value. And this is why I put in the work. And now I can, listen, man, women are easy. Now, once you have that down pack, you trolled your line. Remember I told you, um, your bait, I already expressed that, and your boat, what that represents. The next thing is the new rules of the day. Now, old school rules don't work with new school things. So, for instance, Back in the day, you could have used to talk to a girl for like a week, a month, and keep escalating. Y'all had no cell phones, so y'all to see each other. And it took a little while. It was stages were slow, but technology speeds up everything. With Tinder, um, Bumble, and all these other dating things, and you know, the dating apps, it makes the process of dating faster but less meaningful. Now, as a man, here are some things you need to know. Now, when it comes to a woman. I could tell you for a fact, I'm very, very good at meeting, a, seeing a woman, getting her attention, stopping a hover conversation, exchanging contact information, getting her to message me, and then continuing on to set up a date and eventually get her to my place if I want. Okay. That is easy. That is too easy. It's been so scary that it's so easy to get a woman interested in you to get into her panties. That's why I was like, wait, no man, it's too easy. I need something more, more challenging. I need something that's going to inherently raise my value because having sex with a bunch of women or doesn't raise your value inherently. But what does is your body of work. That's why I've chosen this. You know what? Let me take some time to figure out how to get more high status. So I wrote some books, started some courses. Now I have students. All my students are basically older than me. <laughs> that's interesting, right? But you know, I started a website and continue to grow in business. And that feels good because I can look at it and say, whoa, I could recommend someone say, hey, go get my book. <laughs> and I can recommend my, someone say, hey, go get my client book who I helped them wrote the book. So that feels good. But back to the minute, getting into a woman's pants, getting sex is too easy. So, all right, I'm still going to give you a step. So anyway, and then I'm going to give you the repercussions. Number one, before you do any of these things, make sure you're a solid guy. Make sure you have a vision for your life. Make sure you find your purpose because None of it is going to mean anything if you don't find a purpose. You want to have a beautiful family built on righteous principles that allows everyone to be healthy, wealthy, wise, and pleasant. You know, not just 
toxicity that is happening that we see in a lot of relationships. But anyway, let me just give you the, the give give you the, the game, right? So in this day and time, the first thing is when you talk with a woman, when you using when you when you get a number, the first thing is you want to get her to text you. That's what I do. I get women to text me first. Okay, why? Because it shows me that she's interested and willing to put forth. Because if she's willing to put forth, then I'm willing to put forth. I, but at the beginning of the interaction, I always give more value than than ever. I give women access to my books because I want them to level up. But I, I realize that listen, when it comes to women, they ain't interested in in that intellectual stuff. When I say intellectual stuff, they're not interested in reading more books. So they see that as stress. They see that as more trouble. They're interested in things that are comf- comfortable, like going out to the beach, going on a picnic, like hanging out and watching a movie and sightseeing, women like that, those types of stuff. So what I've done is I reverse engineered this thing in a sense that I've done the tactics that get me the result with women, like you could get them in bed like in a day or two. But then I reverse engineered to see if we could build something meaningful, so I start from the process of information, but that's, that don't work, <laughs> okay? So I see that in order to get a woman to be on your program, you have to start with the things that capture her first. I mean, so the first rule you need to make as a man, especially if you don't want to be left on red with a woman and you don't want to be wasting your time, is the first thing is that when you text her, you need to go no longer than three days of talking. But at the first interaction, when you interact with a woman, you need to set a meeting point later on. And then you just use the texting for following up. Texting should strictly be used for negotiating when you two can meet again to hang out. If you use texting just to communicate, hey, how are you doing all that stuff? It, do- it, it doesn't give you any brownie points. You're just going to be a talking buddy. You're not going to be an intimate buddy. I'm telling this from experience. I've done, listen, for me, I'm a type of person who's willing to go into the trenches and practice and see what works and what doesn't. So three-day window, Every text message should be, hey, how you doing? When can we meet up? Hey, how you doing? I'm free on X, Y, and Z. What are you doing? Hey, how you doing? I have this day slot. Let's watch a movie. Let's go eat. It got to be thing. You got to tell her what you want to do, okay? That's number one. So, uh, and you make a rule, say, listen, I could text, right? But if you want to talk with me, we got to talk in person. So I like a coin, to coin a term that Justin Timberlake says, Hey, oh, I'm tired of using technology. Why don't you sit down and talk to me? Who she wants it? Who who she wants it? Who right? So, anyway, so I tell you, I'm very good at this. It's just that I realized that just getting a woman in and having sex and just being able to get to that point that's not satisfying to the soul, it doesn't feed the spirit. But what it does is building something meaningful, deeper, meaningful relationships instead of wasting energy on the wrong women and then don't go anywhere. Okay, next is, like I say, only use texting to get a meeting point. So every text should be meeting point. You should aim to meet a woman for the first time. Like for instance, the first time, within three days, you need to negotiate where and y'all can meet up on a weekend. Find a time slot, even for tea. Go for something like tea, a smoothie, um, something something exciting. Take it to a place, get some coffee, some cookies or something. That's going to be refreshing. That's the time you're going to bond, pair bond, where you're going to interact and hold hands and they keep escalating from there okay next is text is only used to meet up right all right and then you want to work from just meeting up for the first so the first time you meet up within three days you need to get a meeting point then after that you got to get a meeting point twice a week so you want to work together a meeting point twice a week find out a schedule and just go places hey i'm going to the mall x y and z i'm gonna pick up a few days when you join me i'll pick you up be, um, be ready by x y and z you go there etc okay next is um use words such as honey, beautiful. Why? Because even though it may sound like you're giving them validation, it just gives you access to the goods faster because it already puts in the frame of mind that you all two are ready to get um, Okay, everything must lead to hanging out. Everything you do supposed to be leading to a point. So if you're just talking, talking, seeing how it's a day and you don't have a point of reference, you're wasting your time. Women are going to get bored and be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking too long, buddy. You you just, I can put you in a category just for me, right? Um um, I, because I, I, I have my own system. I'm gonna. I have a, a book that I want to release, but I have so many books. It's called How to Get Her, Keep Her, and Make Her Your Girlfriend. Right? How to Get Her, Keep Her, Make Her Your Girlfriend. That's a book I had in the chamber. I never released it because, you know, 
I wanted men to focus on the things that really matter, like develop yourself, man, like develop your, 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 <laughs> your profile in a sense of who you are mentally, physically. Are you a person who people could go to and solve problems? Are you like, come on, man, that's where the value comes in. All right. And, um, avoid, avoid, avoid hard stuff for women. Don't make it hard for like women ready, have a hard time working in the, in the, in the world. So when they have to study and read and stuff, you come as another study reading. She just sees another job. I'm like, I'm going to avoid that. I'm going to the fun stuff. Because think about it. If a woman works all day, crunching numbers, and she works at a number house, so bad. She just, for downtime, she just want to be able to get stress off and all that. She don't want to be coming to another class. <laughs> yeah. Me, I was, try, I was attempting to do the class thing. Because, you know me, I always wanted to elevate the woman to queen status and then work on a sexual level. But I realized that it doesn't work like that. It works in reverse. Um, next is... When you're with a woman, escalate physically. So that's uh, hug, high fives, um, cheek kiss, uh, lip kiss, you know, various aspects. That brings you closer, creating a better bond, you know. And from there, you just keep putting her in different parts of your schedule and go different places and have a time. Where you're supposed to be like almost like a safe space. We talk about as men, women being our peace. Women want a piece of that thing right so yeah women are very highly sexual creatures who are like doing crazy stuff so yeah women are freaky but yeah but um that's a bit of a play playbook rule man honestly this stuff is too easy this is the easy part of life like in life that's easy now when it comes to drama and all that stuff drama is based upon what you just tolerate so when you meet a woman during those times then you start instilling instilling within her your principles of what you like what you don't like what you expect from her Etc. But you only could do that. You can't do it from the get go. Like, hey, this way, like, this not. No, no, it don't work like that. You have to get her in your field of influence. Then you can influence. I mean, that you have to connect with her first to influence. But it's so much more to that. I just give you a short crash course. This crash course worth like what? That's five hundred dollars worth of information. We would apply all these things, you know. But I look forward to my workshops. Masculine health development. I tell you, my brand is called Superman Out for a reason because we have worked ourselves to develop ourselves on multiple levels. Getting women is easy. But you must do it from the right place because if you don't do it correctly, you could screw up your life for a long time. You could get a girl pregnant you don't really want to get, <laughs> you don't want you don't want to be with, and then I could screw up your life in the direct your path. Then you could um have sex and catch an STD, <laughs> all right? Or you could some crazy situations, you know. So that's why I say always take your time, don't rush anything, you know. But if you want to get women, apply those rules I just said. Anyway. Mask and Edge Camp Superman. If you want to support my channel, go get the book Black Superman 13 Avenues of Power. This is the old version. We have a new version. The cover looks different and everything. We have some copies on their way, you know, and uh, books, you know, it's amazing, man. We got the development stuff. So you want the goods, we got the goods on all levels. Women, business, health, relationships. It's easy, man. I've dedicated myself, you know, to these things and train under the best. Anyway, y'all, y'all do well. Enjoy.